This video will start um, getting into what's called power series. So the definition of a power series is if x is a variable, then an infinite series of the form an nth term x to the nth power, remember this is a, um, a bunch of things being added together, is described as this. So your initial term, a0, then your a1, x to the power 1, a2, x power 2, so on and so forth, to a n, x to the power n, but it, it does continue on to infinity, okay? Um, this is called the power series centered at x equal to 0. Now, a more general power series definition would be a n, x minus c to the power n, where you end up with terms that look like this. This is called the power series centered at c, okay, where c is some constant. Um, the convergence of a power series uh, has to fit one of these three things. So for a power series centered at C, precisely one of the following is true, just one. Either the series converges only at that number C that it's centered at, or two, there exists a real number R greater than zero such that the series converges absolutely when the difference between any X value and that center is less than R and diverges when that difference is greater than r. Or three, the series converges absolutely for all x, okay? Now this number r that they were talking about up there is what's called the radius of convergence, okay? If the power series converges only at c, just at c only, then the radius is zero. It's just convergent at c and nowhere else around it. If the power series converges for all x, well, that means every x value. So the radius would actually be infinity because here's x in the middle and everywhere around it, um, or your c, your center is in the middle and everything else around it, which is an infinite line, um, is also in your convergence set. Now the set of all x values for which the power series converges is called the interval of convergence. So here's our three cases, and then just to break down the radius and the interval and put it into perspective. If the power series converges at only C, then R is equal to zero, and your interval convergence is just that C value. Whereas if the power series converges for this um, inequality, then your R will be whatever value you find here, and your i will be your center minus that value and your center plus that value. So it creates a little interval around your center. Now the power series converges for all x, then your radius is infinity and your interval of course would be negative infinity to infinity. So for example one, it says find the radius of convergence of this series here. So we want to talk about absolute convergence. So for me, I'm going to apply the um, one of the tests that tests for absolute convergence. And my favorite one or the easiest one that I find to use is the ratio test. So what I'm going to do is we're going to first figure out what's happening at zero at the center, because notice this does not have X minus a value inside the power. So that means that my center is C equal to zero. Okay, so I need to figure out what's happening at my center, and then I need to figure out what's happening um, around that center. So we basically have to split the problem into two parts. So the first part that I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what happens for all x value, or for my x value equal to zero, my center, right? What happens then? Well, in that case, then my series will become n factorial times zero to the power n. Well, zero to the power n is actually equal to one. Now it might look like it equals zero, but you have to remember you're starting to plug in numbers at zero. So when you plug in zero for n and n, you get zero factorial times zero to the power zero. Then the next term you get, you would plug in one. So you would get one factorial and then zero to the power one. Then you would plug in two, you'd get two factorial times zero to the power two, so on and so forth, right? Now this value though, by definition, this is one. 
And also by definition, this is evaluated as one. Anything to the power zero is defined as one. However, zero to the power one is zero, and zero times one factorial is zero. Zero squared is also zero times two factorial is zero. And the same can be said for every other term afterward. They're all gonna be a bunch of zeros. So ultimately what you end up with here is just one plus a bunch of zeros, which eventually is just gonna be the value one, okay? Now, um, which means that it does converge because we did get a sum for the series, okay? So this means the series converges for x equal to zero, okay? It does converge for x equal to zero. Now let's see what happens for x not equal to zero. So every other value besides zero, okay? Here's where we're gonna apply the ratio test. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth plus one term. So n plus one factorial and then x to the n plus one over the original series n factorial and x to the n. Now, if you already know how this is gonna reduce, then you can go ahead and reduce it without having to do this step. But if you need to see it, then actually write it out, okay? But I know that n plus one factorial is n plus one times n factorial, and I know x to the n plus one is x to the n times x to the one. And downstairs, you still have n factorial and x to the n. So these will reduce, these will reduce, and what you end up with is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one times x. So it really doesn't matter what x is because when n goes to infinity, this school is going to be infinity, okay? What that means So what that means here is that, remember the, the, here, let me flip back so you can see real quick. But if I flip back to the ratio test, remember what happens. If you get the limit is less than one, it converges. If you get that the limit is greater than one, then it diverges. And I got infinity, which is greater than one, which means that the series diverges. Well, if it diverges for every for anything that is not equal to zero, but it only converges here, then what that means is that your radius is going to be zero and your i is going to just be that center. In our case, that center number is zero. So in this case, our, if we were to graph it on a number line, here's zero. This is the only place where the series converges. It does not converge anywhere else, okay? Um, and I'm gonna include both the radius and the interval of convergence for every single problem because they do use those interchangeably in WebAssign. And so I just, for every example that we do, I want you to have both um, just so that you can see examples of that so you're prepared for the WebAssign assignments. Now example two says the radius of convergence, find the radius of convergence for this problem. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. Now notice this does not have x minus an x value here, okay? And since it doesn't, that means that our center is again c equal to zero. So we have to figure out what is happening when x is equal to zero, and then we'll figure out what's happening when x is not equal to zero. So in this case, my series would actually become negative one to the power n, and then zero to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial, okay? So in this case, what we end up with is going to be very similar to before. So when n equals zero, here you get negative one to the power zero, which is one, zero to the power one, which is defined as zero, and then 
2n, which is 0, plus 1, 1 factorial is 1. Then for n equal to 1, this is going to be a negative value, but this is going to be 0 to the power 3, which is 0. And then this is going to be 3 um, factorial. But it doesn't matter because every other term is going to have the same similar thing going on here. They're all going to end up being zeros, which means in this case you do get 0. Now remember, we have found the sum. If you can find the sum, then you already know that the, the series converges, and that is what it converges to. So the fact that I get a value means that the series converges. So now let's go ahead and see what happens when x is not equal to zero. And then in that case, we'd like to apply that ratio test. So here I'm going to plug in um, the nth plus one term. So we have to be very careful because everywhere you see the n is where the n plus one goes. So it becomes negative one to the n plus one. And then x to the two parentheses n plus one plus one. And then in the denominator, parentheses two parentheses n plus one close plus one close factorial times the reciprocal of the nth term, which is 2n plus 1 factorial over negative 1 to the power n and 2 to the, I'm sorry, x to the 2n plus 1. Okay, so this one will require a lot of simplifying, but let's go ahead and work on that. So this will become negative one to the power n, negative one. This will become x to the, let me just work up here and then I'll split it. So here this is gonna become two n plus two plus one. Now I'm gonna commute that around. So I'm gonna have two n plus one together to reduce with that guy, but then x to that other two here, okay? Now the denominator will become 2n, the same thing, 2n plus 2 plus 1 actually makes 2n plus 3. So if I want to separate that, it'll be 2n plus 3, decrease it by 1, 2n plus 2. And I don't want to put the factorial here because that won't reduce with this one. So if I reduce one more, I'll get the next term, and then I can put the factorial on that since it'll reduce with this other one. So you have to cleverly manipulate these things so that you can simplify these expressions. So this will reduce with this, this factorial will reduce with that factorial, and this negative one exponent will reduce with the other. And so what you end up with is a negative one x squared over two n plus three and two n plus two. Okay, and then you'll notice that here, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, it doesn't matter that the uh, numerator is positive or negative, it'll still go to zero. And zero is less than one, which means it does converge absolutely. And because it converges absolutely for all x not equal to 1, or for all x, I'm sorry, not equal to 0, that means that our radius is actually equal infinity. And our interval will be from negative infinity to infinity, centered around 0. Now we're running out of time, so I'm going to have to do the next couple of examples in a different video, but we'll continue shortly.